Hey, James G here. Today on Persona Studio 1.6, we are going to discuss uh, how to set up your interface and how to pull up your input output. So obviously this is extremely important first step, otherwise you're not going to get any signal from anything. So here I am on the main startup screen, back to the setup section that's down here. Now you can see that it shows here the Claret Plus 8 Pre. That is the interface that we have. So when you first pull this up, it will probably say Mac speakers or PC speakers or something like that since you haven't assigned this yet. So I can just plug, I can click right there and then this is gonna show my devices. Now it's much like setting up a printer, okay? So you put up a printer, uh, then when you go to that printer setting there, it'll recognize and go, hey, do you wanna use that one, right? It's the same way with the interface there. So as you can see in the drop down box here, it would, it would have said iMac speakers. I plugged this one and said, yes, I wanna use this one. Uh, it's important because some people will have several interfaces, but you're not, you can only sign one at a time, but there might be reasons why they switch. So there you go. And it'll default to playback and recording device as well. So the next thing you wanna look at is your dev device block size. This has to do with your latency, okay? Your latency is that delay that you get from between the input happens and you hear it in the output. That's basically all that is. And right now I have it at 512 samples. And right here in the latency, you can see it's 14.9 milliseconds. So, so quick that I don't notice that uh, delay at all when I'm doing that. Now, if you do notice that delay, you can go down to these smaller numbers of the samples in your latency will get really real, but your quality will also go down. So it's kind of a trial and error of figuring out what's the best quality I can get with latency I can deal with. That's really all it is there. So once I've set up that and I hit OK, I'm going to start me a new song. We're going to go to record and mix new audio one song here. We're going to call that test. I know I stayed up late thinking for that. Uh, and then we get to our song screen here. Now, Remember when you go down here to your mix, or you can hit F3 to pull up your mixer. On the top left there, we have our IO or input and output. That's the fastest way to get to this screen, okay? Just hit that one click and you're there. You can also go to Studio One, hit Preferences, and then you can pull it from down here, your song set up there. I'm more of a path of least resistance guy. I like the one click method. So I just go over here and bam. So this is what pulls up here. So this is going to show the interface that we just chose. Okay. And then the part on the right here. Now, this is going to be toward for that interface. These do not change. In other words, this particular interface has the options of having eight inputs, which are XLR or quarter inch, but I can also do SPDIF and ADATs. Okay. The part on the left here is the part that I'm actually going to assign. So when I go to a track on the drop down box, these are going to be my options. So you want to label these however you want, but where it makes sense. For me, what makes sense is this first, this first one here is a stereo one and it's input one and two. So I would just call that, you know, input one and two, right? If I want to think of the numbers, um, like at home, I have two H, I have 16 channels. So I have A one through eight, B one through eight. Um, in a studio I used to own, I had three, so A, B, and C, whatever the system for you works. Um, but obviously if I click down input one and two, it makes sense. So here in this, this, I would put input one here. I would put input two. So they're going to easily correspond with input one has a mono track on input one, input two has a mono track on input two. Well, I can do eight, so I can add another mono track, input three, and it's going to default to three. I hit apply. And there it is. I can put this wherever I want. It doesn't really matter. So whatever system works for you. A lot of people who are doing small recording, you might have just a very small interface that has input one and two. Okay. Um, this, this being a, uh, obviously a bigger one that you can do things with. So if you wanted to add another stereo track, um, like I always have a stereo track that's always on seven and eight and it's my keyboards are always plugged in there and it just lives there. So I will put that one as a stereo track. I would call it keyboards and then I would assign it to seven and eight and apply. So when I pull down that simple, it's like, oh, okay, I just want the keyboard input. So that's really kind of cool is that you can design this however you, you want to do it here. Um, now we go to the outputs. So where are the outputs going? This is set up to a main one and two. Well, these are going to my actual reference monitors that are there. Well, I want to add a headphone mix, not a problem. So I had stereo, 
because it's pretty much always going to be stereo output. And let's say, and you'll have to check with your particular device, and it there will be a diagram somewhere saying, hey, output blah, blah, blah is for headphones or whatever it is. I, we just happen to know that this one is 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 because we've done it a million times. So I'm going to call that headphones. And I want the headphones to come out of 5 and 6, so I apply that. Now, one extra step that's a very important step here, especially if you are recording, is this box that says Q-Mix. Now, if I don't check that, it's still going to go out that output, but I have no way of changing the gain. If I hit Q-Mix and apply, the Q-Mix will show up on my fader uh, when I'm actually recording stuff. So I can send one thing to main, and the headphone will have its own volume also. So it won't default checked, so always make sure that your Q-Mix has a check. And that is it, basically, for setting up your inputs and outputs. You want to set them up to where you've got a system going, save it as a template, and then every time you pull up, your input and output is already ready to go, so you don't have to do this every time.